Um, it turns out that the idea of intelligent design is not actually something new. It was, uh, in fact, part of the assumed perspective of many of the scientists who invented modern science. Uh, the, the, one of the assumptions of the scientific revolution, that uh, extraordinary burst of creativity that was part of, of uh, Western philosophy and science that occurred between 1300 and 1700, was there was something about nature that made it intelligible, something that, uh, because it had issued from a designing intelligence, we, as we investigated it, could, ex could see evidence of design. We could make sense of nature because nature had been designed. And you saw this, this point of view, it was in Kepler, it was in Copernicus, it was in Boyle, it was in Newton. And in Newton, in fact, he developed arguments for design in the optics, his great book on light and the eye, and he also developed them in the, the Principia, his great book on, on uh, the theory of gravitation. So this is not a new idea, but it's an idea that's being resuscitated, we will argue tonight, because of new developments in science, new discoveries that have again pointed in the direction of a designing intelligence behind life in the universe. Um, now, the, the idea, though, went out of phase for a while, went out of fashion, and perhaps the most important book that uh, put des the design hypothesis on the defensive was uh, Charles Darwin's book on the origin of species. And uh, Darwin had many great ideas in the origin of species. He championed the idea of change over time. He, he, he proposed a new mechanism, natural selection, that I think is a real mechanism that, that can accomplish real things. And um, he also had a, uh, an idea about the history of life that he proposed. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But the, the central legacy of Darwin's theory, and the one that's being celebrated this year in the anniversary year of Darwin's uh, great book, The Origin of Species, is his claim to have refuted the argument from design. In fact, Darwin, in one of his letters that was published after the publication of The Origin, says, said, there seems to be no more design in the variability of organic beings and in the action of natural selection than in the course in which the wind blows. So though many scientists for, for centuries thought that their job as scientists was to, to detect, perceive, characterize, discover the design and order in nature, Darwin argued that there was no design in nature, that there was the appearance of design perhaps, but no real actual design, and especially not in biology. Now, the, the modern neo-Darwinists, in particular uh, uh, people like Richard Dawkins, who has become a great spokesman for Darwinian evolution, have, have championed that position, and they've made very clear this central Darwinian commitment to the rejection of design. Uh, Dawkins says that biology is the study of complicated things that give the appearance of having been designed for a purpose. Um, uh, Ten points on the quiz for anybody who can identify the important word in Dawkins' quote. It's obviously appearance, not design, but the appearance of design. Now, why, does, why do Darwinians say this? Why do neo-Darwinians say that there's only the appearance of design? Well, it actually makes sense if you understand their perspective. According to Darwinism and modern neo-Darwinism, there is a purely undirected process, namely natural selection acting on random variations or mutations that can produce the appearance of design without itself being designed or guided in any way. That process is natural selection, and according to the Darwinian point of view, natural selection is a purely unguided process that can mimic the powers of a designing intelligence, but which is itself completely unguided and undirected. Now, there's a, an easy way to illustrate this, just uh, uh, almost with, with any example of Darwinian uh, uh, of evolutionary change in action. But here, here's, here's one I made up that I used to use with my students. I, imagine you're a sheep rancher or herder up in, in the, 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 the far north of Scotland. And uh, you've got some, you've got some uh, sheep and you would like to, to breed a woollier, a, a woollier uh, uh, a breed of sheep. So what do you do? Well, it's been long known that if you select the wooliest male and the wool wooliest ewe and only allow those two to breed, then uh, you'll get a slightly woollier group of offspring. And if you, again, in the next generation, choose the wooliest male and the wooliest female, and you repeat that process generation after generation after generation, you can produce a woollier, a woollier breed of sheep. Uh, this is uh, a process that, that is often called artificial selection. The selection is being done by the intelligent rancher or breeder. 
What Darwin thought is that if you, it, that he, he thought, well, that's a real process, and that produces a small amount of change over time. He says, but what if, what if instead of the rancher choosing the, the sheep that will be allowed to breed, what if there's a series of something like a very cold winters, such that only the wooliest males and females survive, and what if that process goes on, a series of very cold winters, environmental change, generation after generation after generation? What will be the outcome? Well, Darwin argued the outcome would be that you get a woollier breed of sheep, just as in the case where you had the intelligent guidance of the, of the rancher guiding the process. So in that case, nature does the selecting. Nature does what only previously the intelligent breeder had done. So that's the Darwinian view, that nature can produce the appearance of design. That organism looks designed because it's so well adapted to its environment, but that appearance of design is illusory. It's, a, it's an illusion because the undirected action of natural forces is really what's responsible. Now, of course, the question is whether or not, and of course, natural selection is a real process and it does produce change, but the question is, can it produce every appearance of design? Can it explain every appearance of design? According to Darwinism and Neo-Darwinism, it can, 